There we are. We're live. It's showtime. Good morning, everyone. Oh, boy. Oh, let's see. What's today, it's, Daphne? It's Monday. It's, it's Monday, Monday. One of the Mondays. One of the many Mondays. What is Monday, it? Monday, March 28th. Oh, that specific Monday. <laughs> and we are the Raging 2, and this is our vlogs. And here is our intro. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah we still love RJ <laughs> over there. everybody's podcast is is their favorite so that, that's kind of how it works I'm right partial. Partial. <laughs> we're partial to ours there yes yeah so good good morning good morning uh nita good morning, good morning everybody Daphne. um it's another monday another week um of everything that we need to do <laughs> we're all keeping busy trying to uh stay off the streets um, so, uh, welcome everybody watching. Welcome everybody in the chat. Congratulations to Mike Jimmy for getting through a convention and almost selling out of all his, uh, books. Congratulations on that. Um, I guess that, uh, means that, uh, kind of like the convention scene is kind of getting back to normal, whatever normal is, but normal for us should be selling out our books. So that, that's always a good thing. So congratulations with that. So uh, let's uh, get this uh, show on the road. Shall we have a lot to talk about today? Boy. I know. It's like, so hello, everyone. My name is Daphne Lage, and I'm a cartoonist, illustrator, and comic book artist from New York. I have been self-publishing comics since 1992, and I am known for my funny animal fantasy adventure, Tall Tales, uh, which volume four will be, will be uh, premiering on Kickstarter uh, mid year, so mid 2022. So watch out for that. And I am currently also known for my medieval fantasy soap opera drama, Eagle Raven, Heir of the First Unicorn, now entering its third week on Kickstarter. And we got some stuff to talk about that. So, you know, stay tuned. Uh, you, in the meantime, you can read both my comics online at Tall Tales, T A I L S online.com and egoworks.com, E G O W R K S. And you can check out all my videos. Uh, on how I make my comics on YouTube at Daphne Lage Art. And if you are joining us from Facebook, from Twitter, from any place else you might have seen our uh, links, come on over to YouTube. Join the sexy people in the chat. Um, you know, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and uh, get notified whenever any of our streams go live so you don't miss a thing. Like, we have a full week. Uh, a full schedule on a full week, uh, you know, you'll be, you'll find something you, you'll enjoy. Um, so yeah, so subscribe to our channel and, uh, Nita, who Yo. are you to the peoples? I am Nita Lanning. I am a <laughs> writer, a vlogger, a blogger, a sometimes dirty poet. Uh, yeah, I am the CEO and executive producer of the Rage and Two Broadcast Network. Wow, look at all these sexy people showing up. Okay, yeah, really? No, and speaking of sexy and dirty poetry, so we want to thank everybody who showed up for Saturday's House of Bob premiere. Thank you very much. We had a really good time. We no actually... Russian showed up and no sex bots. I'm so right. confused. It was, it's amazing. Yeah, I know. You would think that adult the adult contact label would have dragged every... No, no, not, not at all. Not even one. <laughs> not even one. I was yeah. lonely. And we managed to stay on the air in spite of some of the artwork that i was showing 
So, so I, so thank you so much for everybody who supported that, uh, that, that first show. It was a lot of fun, got work done. Uh, we had some really interesting conversation. I showed up, uh, I showed off some, uh, sneak peeks of some, uh, of a project that, uh, I'm, I'm cur also current, one of the many projects I'm currently, uh, working on. Um, but this is the first time that, well, actually technically the second time if you count the preview that I, the, that I showed on Facebook. This is the first time that I actually showed what kind of is going on with that book. So, um, so yeah. So catch the replay if you know you you know got to log in and uh, verify your age to do it. But please catch that on the replay. It was a lot of fun. And uh, also, just to uh, tell everybody, during that show, I had um, a special. Uh, a House of Bob special on my store where you, if you go to my store and you buy the yearbook, which is the clean version of House of Bob, I will toss in the Kickstarter uncensored version of, uh, of House of Bob uh, with that order, including the exclusive Kickstarter print that came with it and the House of Bob sticker. So uh, I, I only have three of those sets left. So if you're interested in taking up the House of Bob offer, uh, go ahead on my store. I have three of those sets, complete sets left. So so on that uh, so so that uh, so yeah so so thank you again for, for everybody showing up for that um i am currently going to keep it once a month because boy did i have a hard time waking up the next morning <laughs> you know, it's like it's too it's amazing what being what being up two hours after my bedtime will do to my circadian rhythm so for right now it's going to be once a month we will announce when the next uh episode will uh will uh happen too so i guess let's go through our regular housekeeping so you... long shots so let's talk about long shots so yes seven publishers nine books one big deal the ultimate introduction to the independent comic scene today in crowdfunding you are guaranteed to find the book your next favorite book if not all of them in this campaign it's nine books for $25 there is no other campaign that gives you this much value for two over for about 250 pages worth of content of every genre that you can think of in this one campaign now here's the thing if you check, look at the uh, the chat. There are two links there. If you wanted a clarification of the story that brought you long shots, that made it necessary for us to bring you long shots, the videos are in the chat right now. Um, we don't, you know, it's like we're not the type of show where we want to talk about drama or we want to get into drama. But the thing is, though, is that it was drama that brought this campaign to life, that made it necessary to bring this campaign to life. Right. And we're at a point now that it, there's no, we, we no longer kind of have to pussyfoot around it. So if you want to know the, the long, sordid story of what made long shots necessary, Go watch those two videos in the chat. Uh, of course, I was about to say right now, but no, don't don't watch it right now. No, Just, that's, you know, that's it, that's <laughs> it. Watch I, it. Oh, go ahead. While we're at that, I really want to thank the guys over at Black Rose Comics and Dojo Con. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Because um, let's just say it was nice to be vindicated that, uh, that that something was happening to us and that we weren't losing our minds. We weren't crazy, you know, and this just helped solidify what we were suspecting all along. And now we know for sure. And now now it's like all it's all about spreading this information and and yeah and it's like and support long shots uh while you while you're at it because this helps the creators that were affected by what turned out to be a completely fraudulent deal but you get these excellent books as a result 
So this is not a pity fuck campaign. You're not, th this is absolutely not. Th you are getting nine quality books in this campaign. You know, it, it's it's like I don't know how much you. I mean, it's like look, you you get tall tales, you get you get the Oswald Chronicles, the the first my first day story, the first time it's in color. Yeah, you know, it's exciting. like that's yeah. So the, everything is that. So yeah, so support this campaign. Watch those videos. It'll all make sense in the end. All the weirdness that I know all of you were kind of kind of seeing and not understanding what was going on it will all make sense you're free now bitches <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of oswald the oswald chronicles is now on kickstarter now a project we love 22 days to go i like to thank all the 65 backers who have backed so far if you've never heard of the oswald chronicles this is the best campaign for you to jump on to, to learn about our little magical mouse. Um, it's a brand new story arc. And uh, this is the first two issues of a four issue limited series. So uh, you can jump on this campaign, start it from the beginning. We also have the volume one trade paperback available as an add-on. So you can really start from the beginning. So you can say that this campaign for the Oswald Chronicles is very beginner friendly. So uh, check out uh, the Oswald Chronicles on Kickstarter, links, in the show notes and in the chat do you want me to run through the cards and circle back to eager raven yeah let's do eager raven last because i got right. a little right so um of course crowdfunding season we're all fulfilling right now so and if you're not fulfilling now you will be fulfilling and you will need those gemini mailers so save five percent on your next gemini mailer with our coupon code code rage in two save that money at least you know it, at least it'll pay for shipping so you know anything in this economy gemini mailers in this economy absolutely save five percent with our coupon code and if you have any questions comments and um you know, any suggestions for any topics you want to talk about, you can email us at rageinavc at gmail.com. I mean, just, you know, even if it's just to compliment us or, I don't know, say, insult say, us too. I don't right. care. It's like, yeah, it's say so. we're a couple of bitches too and we'll go, we'd be like, we know. <laughs> Thank you for watching. So, you can do that through email, rageinavc at gmail.com. And, and, but also, there's us. So, if you uh, want to catch us later, on the replay you can catch us live again on friday at 11 a.m eastern so yes and yeah so like i said eagle raven is now entering its third week um so if you want to show the card for the campaign i'll show the right. card i'm gonna let you share the screen so you can control the page right exactly so Ow. right so eagle raven air of the first unicorn issues one through four plus the prequel story on uh on um Kickstarter, <laughs> all these campaigns, all these crowdfunders. So um, let's see. Oh, here we go. So yeah, so you can. So it's on uh, the. It's on Kickstarter now. Another project we love. We're collecting all the project we love badges between me and JD. So we're like I said, we're just entering our third week, and I just want to bring. So I'm bringing up the campaign now just to show oh, oh okay okay there, there we go. go so i want to thank all 118 backers we have 16 days to go we are so close to unlocking the third uh the, the third um trading card stretch goal we have you know with the we still have the sticker to unlock and we still have the eight page short that i will add to the book uh once we hit six thousand can we hit six thousand in 16 days i don't know let's find out together shall we it's an eight page story that debuts my uh, tales from the outer kingdoms short story collection it's all the little short stories that expand on the eager raven world uh but doesn't quite fit in with the main 15 issues so i'm planning on collecting all these shorts but let's kind of start getting them out now in as uh, stretch goals this is going to be the first one so when we hit six thousand eight pages the first eight page story gets added to the uh to uh issue 
issue four. And by the way, if for some reason I have to reprint issue four after this campaign, that story will not appear in those subsequent printings. This st short story will be exclusive to the Eagle Raven campaign for issue four. Uh, whatever is ordered, uh, whatever is uh, pledged for, that's what's going to get ordered. And... Um, and, and yeah, that, uh, and it's going to be just in whatever I print to fulfill this campaign. Anything printed after this campaign, after that initial run, that story will not appear in it. So if you want to see this eight page story, you have to pledge to this campaign. Now, speaking of exclusives <laughs> to this campaign, now let me, uh, let me just, uh, give this a little refresh. Like I said, we're just answer, we're just entering. Okay, there we go. We're just entering the third week. We have 16 days to go. So, what perfect time to debut another exclusive than today? And that exclusive is a variant cover, a new variant cover. I commissioned up and coming artist Jaden Lanning all relations <laughs> to our fearless leader. <laughs> I commissioned her to do an Eagle Raven variant cover and holy crap, she did not disappoint. There was like not even the option for disappointment in this image. Look at how gorgeous these covers are. So these covers are the new add-on. They are available right now on the campaign. So you have three options for this cover. You have the regular version, you have the virgin variant, and you have the rainbow hollow cover variant. They're absolutely, I mean, I can't, I am so excited for this cover. I, I mean, I was just so excited when I got it. It's like, it's everything and more than I was expecting. So what better way to show this off than on this gorgeous set? I'm so set. excited. Yeah, th I mean, really, I mean, it's like, look, I I'm gonna print a poster of this and put, you know, and, and hang it up on in the office once I have everything all nice and painted and redone. I may not you know? be smart, but I gave birth to a genius. <laughs> So yes, so it's available as an add-on individually, <laughs> individually and as a set. So you can get all three if you want. You can get the your favorite your favorite individual ones if you want, and uh, yeah, and like I said, it's exclusive. I am only printing to order. Whatever is whatever is purchased on this campaign. That's all I'm printing. If you're thinking that, oh, I'll wait until after the campaign to see if I have extras, that's not happening. It's like that this is it. Whatever, you, if you want this cover, you have to purchase it on this campaign. So, uh, yeah, so we figure we start the week off like just gangbusters with this. So brand new variant cover on uh, the Eagle Raven, Eagle Raven issue four campaign. So limited to what's ordered during the campaign. This is your one and only time to get these. So, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, what's new for the, uh, for the campaign. Oh, but also, also one more thing too. If you have pledged to Eagle Raven, or you have yet to pledge for Eagle Raven, there is a new link in the chat that's going to take you to Rob Multari's Nightwolf. Here's the thing. So we did a crossover print the last time he did his campaign. Eagle Raven, Snowpaw, very popular print. We're doing it again. So if you pledge to this campaign and you're looking to pledge to Nightwolf when it comes out, there is a new Eagle Raven Nightwolf crossover campaign that you will be able to get. But you have to pledge to both of our campaigns in order to get this. And I just finished this yesterday. I'm very excited for it. 
And this is what you're going to be getting if you support both of our campaigns. Hit that button, Nita. Show the peoples. Show the peoples the uh, this. You will be getting this print, this crossover print. Holy crap! This is probably one of my best pieces so far. You know, as of yet. Support both our campaigns. And uh, Rob Voltari on the Nightwolf campaign will give you instructions on how you can get this crossover print added to your pledge. Well, like I said, you that needs to be a poster. It really does. It really does. So, and, you know, and you can say that this is also the, I guess, the campaign debut of Disaster Son Loki, Facebook favorite, specifically asked for. You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> if you want, if you want this print, support Eager Raven, support Nightwolf. Link is in the chat. And you will get this print added to your order. So, was that exciting or what, Nita? <laughs> so much excitement. I'm overstimulated so, now. <laughs> but yeah, so that's um, so that's pretty much what's going on uh, this week. Uh, a lot going on. Um, so much. Yeah, so much. I mean, it's like, yeah, so we have 16 days to go on the Eagle Raven campaign. So please uh, support uh, all of our, you know, just, just all the campaigns that we're showing right now. Baby's uh, first cover. Yeah, baby's first cover. That's right. Absolutely. So, Nita, you have any uh, any uh, housekeeping on uh, um, your end? No, not really. Like, uh, we got we've got a, a new show coming up on April 9th at 10 a.m. Eastern. Sketchy Saturdays. Uh, Mike, Jimmy, and Marv V will be there. They will be your host. Um, oh, Wednesday. Oh, okay. Speaking of network and drama and everything, if you yeah. guys are ready to hear our guys' side of the story, we're finally ready to go public. Randy Zimmerman will be hosting Zimcast at 9 p.m. Eastern. That is the 30th, I believe, because I don't have the right calendar up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Another time. Uh, yeah, Wednesday, yeah, it, it's it, that it, Wednesday it, 30th. It's, yeah. it's, it's, and it's it's our turn to talk. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because like I said, we're, we're not we're not drama people. So it's like that's not the point of our shows and, and whatnot. It's like we just like to come on, have a good time, talk, you know, just talk about indie comics and, and all the stuff that we're doing. But this was something that has been going on for, I guess, pretty much the last year and a half. And it affected pretty much everything we we, we, we did and we were doing. Um and in a certain way, it still affects us now, uh, because because of because of this nonsense, because of this drama, um, we were finagled into printing books. We probably we would not have printed any you know otherwise, and now it's like we're just trying to make the best out of a bad situation. And, you know, us, me and Nita are not going to get into any, you know, we're not going to get into any on, you know, like on the air details about it. Like I said, the videos are in the chat. You can, you know, watch them at your leisure. If you have any questions, uh, you can, Feel you, free you, to can ask. You, you can ask us, you can DM us. Uh, we'll try to answer uh, at least what we know, we personally know of the situation. Um, I was tangentially, well, I was tangentially involved in the fact that I was the one that was working with the printer, uh, help, well, helping, uh, um, JD with the printer to get these books printed. Right. Um, so I know a lot of what happened. Um, I was a witness to a lot of what happened, but if you ask something that's a little bit more specific, that's a little outside of what I know, I will forward, you know, I can send you uh, to other people that you can talk to directly right. or I will forward. Be. Right. It's like, but you know, you, you're not going to get hearsay. You're going to get all the information from the actual people who went through this so uh that's 
so yeah so that that's really it's like the the, the long and the short of it um right. so tune in wednesday night right tune in wednesday and and randy will go through more of the detail um of this um but yeah but like i said videos videos are in the chat we're more than happy to answer questions behind the scenes um and and that's pretty much it and in the end it's like look we're all grown-ass adults uh, we're all going to take what we're going to get out of this information. And you know what? It's like, and, and then it's like, what you decide to do with that information is on you. Let, let, let me right. just put it that way. You know? So that's pretty much, um, oh my kind God, of the deal with that. <laughs> what happened? I suddenly sense an evil presence. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and and that's the thing. Okay, so let's yeah, so so yeah, so drama aside, we're we're gonna we're gonna put that. That's about oh, as much of away. the drama, yeah. you know, uh, aside. Um, I have been looking forward to this interview for a for for a while. I've known about our upcoming, our next guest. Uh, well, our guest coming up in in the in the next in the next half hour. Um, I don't know. It's like for 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 a while, I've been kind of intimidated to talk to her i guess you know not as scary but, as right, right. but it's um, like you know she's just you know it's like i watched an interview with her she was just really intense and i'm like going i want to talk to this woman but i don't know if i can but now i get my chance because she's mortal like the rest of us <laughs> so, she's not like the rest of us well you know. I <laughs> you know, but so we will be, so we're just going to show some love um, and stay tuned because our guest for today is Christy Shin, demon, uh, D with her demon bitch book on uh, crowdfunding right now. And I'm only saying crowdfunding because I forgot whether it's Kickstarter or Indiegogo. I, I, Kickstarter. <laughs> I keep confusing the two. So uh, let's show some love and then we will return with uh, Christy Shin and find out more about Be right back campaign. and messages hang there tight we go. hang tight <laughs> It's Monty Moore. I'm a 30 year comics veteran in comics, games, and movies. And you've been watching one of my absolute favorite podcasts, Catch the Craze. You are watching Catch the Craze. What am I listening to? And you're listening to Catch the Craze. Where are all the indies at? A Catch the Craze podcast. What are you watching? I'm watching Catch the Craze. What are you going to do? Subscribe now to Catch the Craze, the number one show online for independent. Have you subscribed to? You are an independent. Catch the Craze! Making moves on your own. Catch the Craze! On your grind in the streets. Catch the Craze! Join the movement. Catch the Craze! Hi, I am Joe Dean McPhee. I am the host of From the Desk of Small Press Publisher. And I want to cordially invite you to watch our show, Saturdays at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. On our show, we will have different guests as well as talk about the comic book industry and pop culture. And every so often, I might actually do a drawing session or a 3D rendering session every here and there. So once again, I want to invite you to watch From the Desk of the Small Press Publisher right here on the broadcast channel that you're looking at, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Hope to see you there and make certain that you catch from the desk of a small press publisher at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks. And we are back and joining us is going to be my favorite pedigree Korean. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Hey. Welcome to our house. We vacuumed. <laughs> I didn't fucking yet. I'm way getting ready for WonderCon on top of other shit. Right. No, yeah. it, it's kind of cold in California today, and since we're such pussies for the weather, I decided Halloween was going to be a little early, so I dressed up like Billy Eilish. Right. Absolutely. No. It. You know. It's um. It's cold here too. It's like it's like 23 degrees outside, and it's like you know. It wasn't it just like the first day of spring, a couple of days ago. So it's like okay, great. I, I, I went in and then you said you were intimidating. I'm like, what the fuck? Dude? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so stupid. It, it's like, I, I, yeah, it's like, like, I know I shouldn't be, but it's like, I don't know. I was watching this interview of, of yours and it's like they were asking you about um, uh, your inspirations. 
And for some reason, the fact that you had mentioned Caravaggio, <laughs> just kind of like, oh, 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 no. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, the butt sex, you know. You know, it's like, right, exactly, you know. It's like, well, the Vatican got to get their jollies somewhere. <laughs> you know, um, there was like a thing, like, we, I, we were on Pops' show, we were like saying the worst Catholic jokes ever. And, uh, oh, God, there was one called like, what did what did they um what did the two Catholic priests say when they walked into an orphanage? Oh, Hold no. on, kids, y'all get off of here now. Baby gun. <laughs> right. Oh, do we need to put up the the TVMA? Thing? Oh God damn it! Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm gonna say fucking shit. I thought you. No, no, no. Go ahead. ahead. It's like it's like uh, we no, we pretty ahead. much give everybody the heads up. From the I did have my children tuning like, in for like, the first like, half like, this morning. Y'all can go now. <laughs> Yeah, like the thing is, like Nita and I, we've talked and she yeah. heard all my shit. So it's like, whatever. <laughs> but it's funny. Uh, so, like, okay, so two Catholic priests walk into an orphanage oh. and you know what they said to each other? What? Let us pray. Oh. <laughs> like, and there was like day. one person that really annoyed me to a point. Like, okay, Nita actually, when we've talked, I'm actually a really fucking patient person when it comes to people. Like, when I make fun of people in Demon Bitch, these are people like that just fucking came after me and came after it's like all right you right. got it now right um so i found out like the person came from a catholic family so i was like going oh so the reason why you only exist is that your mom was catholic right <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow i got that from my mom like that oh. that fucking mouth it's like i don't like to tune that into that if i can <laughs> right <laughs> So it's like so yeah so let's talk about a uh, demon bitch for a little bit so so is this kind of like your uh, the way you kind of purge all this uh, free thought <laughs> um, you know I, I don't know I mean it's like I I when I growing up you know you're told you got to take the higher road you got to do this you got to do that and the problem is is that I don't have a problem with that like I think that popping off and beating somebody's ass is not really conducive in this environment anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, in certain situations, I can see like if somebody puts their hands on you, you'd like, yeah, beat their ass, you know, just don't fucking touch me and shit. Don't like if they're obstructing you, leave me alone, you know, type right, of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm not for like, just because somebody said something mean to you, you get to pop them in the mouth that way oh, oh, although um, sometimes it would sometimes. be nice to be able to do that oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't just pop anybody in the mouth anymore without yeah. worrying about spending 15 years in jail yeah. well that's why you know i always say to myself give it a day and then <laughs> <laughs> this is not literal but that, 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 that's, that's korean wisdom because that's what mary used to always say give it yeah. 24 hours, hours got, every yeah. time like it made me want to pop her in the mouth sometimes <laughs> like, no, but really. the thing is, is that you gotta let it stew like a good 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 casserole you kind of let it slow cook and then you like when you get past all the rage the anger and the ass beating desires and then you just go full force both barrels and it's surgical like mm. I, i've done that with people that have really tested me i mean nita's known about some of them so she knows it's like it, it's like just that whole fucking thing of um you just kind of it's kind of like you have to look at it like a military surgical strike right and it's just like you know just Okay, yeah, full out frontal assault would be nice, but you know what? Let's go and throw a couple of ICBMs your way in strategic position. So wow. it's there's that too. So, um, but yeah, no, it's it's funny too because I was telling somebody it's like, wow, you can see people on the internet where they haven't gotten in a physical fight like ever, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Shit. Yeah. And yeah, it's like it, people that don't talk that much shit. It's like usually they've they've gotten into fights at school and shit. Right. So. Yeah. And then it's like when you see that. Yeah. And they talk all this shit. And then it's like you, you see them at a convention and they don't even want to come near you. They're like, <laughs> yeah, you're just like going, all right, bitch, whatever. Yeah. Like, right. It's like, yeah, I'm, you keep on going. <laughs> I'm going to go fight a bitch. I'm going to go over there. I'm like, yeah, right, exactly. Then, all of a sudden it. they have nothing to say to you. Yeah. 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 It, it's just, it's funny. But um, going back. Um, yeah. With uh, demon bitch, it's just like, so I was always told to take the high road, which really in our society, they taught it like you stuff it down. Yeah. You can't be mad. Don't let it ruin your day. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like fucking bullshit because like, like one time I, I did, I think what it is is that you shouldn't let it mentally spiral out. Like you don't yeah. deserve good things throughout your day. Cause I got into kind of a fight with somebody close to me and they said kind of some shitty thing and it's a family member. And I was kind of depressed through half the day, but that was because I realized like, okay, they said shitty things to me, but the rest of my day actually went well. And I appreciate it. It's just, okay, I'm kind of depressed because they said shitty things, but that doesn't mean my day can't be good. 
Right. Yeah. It's like we never teach that. So it's like taking the higher road. Okay. I'm not going to go and beat somebody's ass because he looked at me sideways, but it's like, okay, take the higher road. Okay. Just do it in a way that doesn't legally or physically hurt me. Okay. (laughs) And so, and uh, and and drawing nasty pictures about them is probably the next best thing we can do. Oh yeah, like <laughs> Nina's seen some shit, and she had like, yeah. I I mean, it's like one. It's like who knew being a cartoonist would be this complicated, <laughs> right? You know. Well, I get it from the Matt Granny because okay, so when I was a kid, <laughs> my parents took me to Stanford. So being Asian, they want you to either go to Stanford, Harvard, Ivy, right, yeah. all this other fucking bullshit. At least when I grew up. So it was funny because I'm the black sheep where I'm the artist. Everybody else crunches numbers at my mm, fucking, like, yeah. I didn't get the math gene. Like, it's funny because people said, oh, but your parents, like, what, your dad's a mechanical engineer. He designed nuclear reactors. Your mom, she does, like, real thing, but she got a master's in physical organic chemistry. Right, yeah. And, you know, like, so it must be great. They can help you with math. And it's like, no, what the fuck's wrong with you? you can't yeah, no, process. really. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, so she, um, so my mom went out of so it's kind of one of those things so they would take me to stanford because we live near there because i'm from the bay area and uh they would so i went straight to the comic books and you know underground comics is underground comics in the college no matter what yeah i didn't know what that fuck that was so i found life in hell for matt graining (laughs) oh no and one of them is work as hell i think i think it was from work as hell i have all the three books in the anthology but I opened it and one of it says cartoonists and how to annoy them. And it says, <laughs> it is unwise to annoy cartoonists. <laughs> actor and model and um, avant-garde thing. And when I was a kid, I didn't really understand. But now as an adult, being an artist, being all those things, it's like, oh, I fucking get it. Right. Hey, my evil bitch. Come here. Right. Oh, evil there you go. <laughs> so uh, an ass in my face. They all know where the camera is. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, the retention horrors, cats. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 they, the thing is, what I like about cats is, is that they're unmistakably themselves. They don't give yeah. a fuck. No, they, they, oh, no, they, they, it's like whatever they want. That, that's what they're going to. It, that's what they're going to get. <laughs> yeah, this one actually like hates everybody else but me, kind of. There you go. Yeah, but she's kind of a horror. Like she'll flop on the ground and roll in front of people, and then when they try to pet her. <laughs> Yeah, there's times I, ha- I was tired of her shit. I said, get the fuck upstairs. I'm tired of your shit. And she just ran upstairs. Right. Because, yeah, they know. They do learn. They do learn. They, they like to pretend that, they- oh, I'm not a dog, but they learn. <laughs> yeah, the other one is just like a fucking big ramen noodle. Spam he's around here somewhere. And he's like, he reminds me of some guys I know. Anyway, but yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> well then. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, so uh, yeah, because what was funny is that at my last job, um, once everyone, like everyone was like big on like practical jokes and whatnot until they all learned I was a cartoonist and then I became off limits. And and they admitted it was because the last thing they wanted to see was me drawing them angry. <laughs> it was me doing like, okay, if we get her angry, what are we going to end up looking like? <laughs> In her drawing so yeah it does work out a little bit you know? well, so the is like the women that pick fights with me the assholes that end uh-huh. up getting in my book they're usually smaller than me too which is a yeah weird. yeah i mean that's always uh so so yeah so so i was looking through your campaign and and the thing and the the, the cover that actually got me was that the demon bitch triggered mm. and what really what's funny is that what stood out for me about this is that you know like triggered has become like one of those words where it's like people just completely use them for anything and most of the time when i see people use the word triggered it's usually like you know like friggin edgelord comedians who it's like they're talking about how they're gonna trigger you oh am i triggering you am i triggering you but then it's like the way it's it the context is on this image is like no that's me <laughs> so whatever it is you're doing stop doing that you know it's that type of thing and i'm just kind of, and i'm kind of wondering like um like is there like a, a story behind that or it's just like like just after a while all whatever nonsense people throw at you i mean it's like it, it really does end up affecting you on a certain level i think Oh, this guy's saying my last ex is four nine. I can confirm and vouch for it. I don't know what it is. They always fuck with the taller people. I'm five oh, five. Okay. But, um, 
Anyway, going back uh, to the question, not derailing. Um, I think for me, angry woman grows exponentially the shorter they can concentrate. It boils down. Hey, I'm uh, Amaris. I'm, I'm also kind of tired. I rolled out of bed like at right. seven and, and I did that live like promoting you guys. But um, for me, okay, so I kind of do a lot of personal work too. So I kind of like go into self-work about it. I think like as an artist, you kind of have to do that or yeah, as a creative yeah. type. Um, I can't speak for writers. I mean, I, I do write, but I'm not primarily coming from that standpoint. Maybe I should own it. I don't know. I've written and created my own shit. But the thing is, is that um, for me, I actually welcome trigger points sometimes because it helps me ad- address my own shit. Mm. So I don't get, it doesn't layer up. I've right. noticed like, when you've been traumatized, you layer up. Yeah. So you could explode at somebody and it has something to do, some mean shit that your mom said to you, like when you were five. <laughs> so I think, People are worried about getting triggered. And I'm kind of at this point, Christy just did the triggered eyes. That's hilarious. But, um, but the triggered bit is, is that, you know, we should actually kind of welcome triggers because it helps us address our own shit. Mm -hmm. And number two, I mean, I did trigger because like, here I am, I'm stuck at home for the last two years of quarantine and everybody's fucking hyper reactive about everything. It's like the news doesn't help. So it's like this with COVID. It was like, okay, everybody kind of has stage one cancer, right? Right. Here, but it's getting taken care of. And then imagine somebody over your ear saying, you're going to die, bitch, <sighs> repeatedly all the time. So that's why I kind of hate the news because they're supposed to be information. Supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. But they didn't. They just layered all this other shit on top. And then everybody just got fucking hyper inflamed. Well, I'm kind of zen because the year prior to COVID, I had a pancreatic tumor. It had pits. It was like two three inches wow. they were six it was a six inch tumor like i had gained a lot of weight because it fucked with my metabolism it fucked with my moods now i wasn't like going right. all over the place but it really didn't help my moods it didn't help my thought process because i literally had a like after i was recovering literally a film like just peeled from my brain huh. and so after having that near death it, it was like this it was like i was invited to play russian roulette with my health twice wow and I just like had to do this both times, like the first time. Oh yeah, you we think we might you might have cancer. They didn't come out and say, it, but they'll they'll have words to say it, like you have a malignancy. And um, because most pancreatic tumors are cancerous when they find them, but mine was that three to five percent that wow. was immediately. But it was going to be a hundred percent if I'd left it in there. Right. And then the next one was you're going to get diabetes after this. Mm. Don't have that. So okay. it's like. It, it's almost it, the whole thing. It, what's funny is that because uh, 2019, I guess, was was a test because 2019 was also when I, I went through. Um, well, it's like like my my own in my own family, we had a cancer scare and we kind of went through that whole thing. And luckily we were it, it's like it kind of like just as that ended, then the whole COVID thing started. <laughs> So yeah, like, ain't this a bitch? Like, yeah, that's, that's how you and, feel. And, and yeah, and and the thing is, it's like they're. It, yeah, there are people in hospitals, like, like not necessarily, for us, it wasn't necessarily doctors, but the nurses, that sometimes you think they get off on giving you that bad news. Really? Wow. That's yeah. fucked up. Like, I've heard stories <laughs> like that. But yeah. I me, mean, I, yeah. Yeah, it, it was just, yeah, so it's like, so it's like, so I guess, like, depending on the context of how they said, it's like, oh, it may be malignant or, or something like that. It's, it, it, yeah, it's kind of like, okay, are you enjoying this? <laughs> no, like, seriously, think about, like, when Mare got her diagnosis, when she went in for the biopsy, they told us three days. And then that three days turned into almost three fucking weeks before we got an answer. Right. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's weird because I think doctors and everything... Sorry, my nose is itchy. Um, you know, it's kind of a conflict. I, I, in my family, I have doctors, so it's kind of like you get the shitty doctors and you oh, get okay. the good doctors. I was lucky enough to have a team to work on my shit, and the doctor, like, he was done fucking doing a Whipple. Like, if you ever look at the Whipple Kosh uh, procedure, like, literally, depending on what side the tumor is on in your pancreas, depends on what the fuck they reroute and remove. <laughs> Oh so I don't have a gallbladder anymore. And the funniest thing was, like, I got really depressed not having one. Like, I missed it. Like, it didn't do anything wrong. Why the fuck you take it out, you know? And before the surgeon knew me, I said, yeah, could you take a picture of my tumor when you take it out? And you just gave me this weird look. Right. So I don't have a picture. But then when he got to know me, because I follow up with him every so often, 
Yeah, but it, it's just like the nurses I had, like they were really. He'd cool. have known you. He'd have gave you your two. <laughs> yeah, exactly in a jar. <laughs> well, I think I think on the pancreas tits pin. He thought that was great, you know. <laughs> but yeah, they they had to reroute it where they cut down the lower part of my stomach because it shared the blood supply with the head of the pancreas, and they wow. yanked up the whole intestine and stuck everything on the side, <laughs> and then they stuck my pancreas at the end. So, so you're that, like, um, so they, so it's like you're all like all Tetris inside, right? Yeah, it was really kind of weird. Like, you know, wanting me to take a dump, like that felt different, oh. you know, uh, learning how to eat again. I mean, it's not that I couldn't physically eat. It's just, it felt different. And like getting, getting like stuffed on my stomach uh-huh. actually hurts and drains more than getting stuff. Like if you just had a regular stomach, huh. it feels different. It fucking drains you. It's not great. And, um. But again, I'm not trying to be like, all, oh, well, you know, my life sucks so bad. And like, right. you know, it's just, it is, it's just a different adjustment because they've mm-hmm. cut it up and everything. Right. But I've gotten used to it. It's fine. You know, now, now having that experience and then like, like comparing, like, did it change the way you view like the nonsense that does happen online with everybody being hypersensitive or whatnot, because it's like, Hey, I had an actual life or death experience. You're just a voice on the internet type of thing. I mean, it kind of gave me this thing of like, I don't really give a fuck. And it made me (laughs) laugh at them. I mean, one time I said the word retarded, like I said, tell those assholes that they're retarded because these guys are being jerks. Right. And then one said, one woman came forward and said, I find that ableist. So I ignored her and I laughed because I think she cried because I didn't answer her online. Oh, yeah, I know. It's like people just, I I mean, you know, and that's the thing, too, because it's like that's the type of thing that I never hear in person. You know, it's like that. It's like it's sometimes I wonder just like how completely exclusive online this stuff is. And then like once you're in the real world, it's like it's like it all of a sudden they, they know how to talk normally. Yeah, well, it's like funny because like to the retard thing like the thing is is that okay you get so pissed about that word take moron and idiot out of that too because they're both psychological iq terms right yeah right like Uh fuck you for getting in my face right like somebody said oh yeah like my kid thinks that retarded is a bad word i'm like oh well i mean i'm not gonna insult the kid i'm not gonna do stupid shit like that because it's like all right you know they're a kid you know well then your kid doesn't need to be watching me right yeah, I mean, it's like whatever, you know, I mean, it's just, I know, like, kids are raised, and I think we were the same way, too, we're raised with a sense, like, trying to be compassionate, but we're learning how to be compassionate in a healthy way. Right. Like, it's funny, like, you were saying, like, I was intimidated by her and everything. Yeah. Like, I'm not running around being an asshole there. Well, <laughs> like, no, I don't know. It's like, look, I, I really, I, I really don't know. It's like, I, like, I don't know. It, it was just, like, one of these things where it's just like, oh, she's really intense and this, that. Like, you're very unapologetic for 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 what you say for the cartoons that you draw and and like i said like even even hearing that like oh what were your inspirations and you mentioned caravaggio when i was used to so many people say oh todd mcfarlane <laughs> you know it's like, I mean, todd mcfarlane deserves it but I mean, right? it, it's funny because it's like i i just like people when they ask me that question it's like uh-huh. it's such a myth you know uh-huh. Many later think if it's still still in halfway is a bit risky when speaking with other people. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I like I like Salvador Dali because he was a personality, yeah. but he yeah. also had talent at the same time. Yeah, right. And thirdly, he liked fucking with people. Like, yes, yeah, he, he did. Really weird, yeah, but he really loved fucking with people. And um, there were stories of him doing all sorts of crazy shit and everything. And it, it's yeah. just like the guy like was unapologetically himself. Yeah. But yeah, he was he did things that I wouldn't necessarily agree with in terms of like how he lived his life in terms of like, uh, I don't know if that really worked, but right. you know, to each their own. But I mean, it's kind of funny. Like people ask me to like, I think also I don't like, I don't have a problem when people ask me a hard question. Like, Oh, should we cancel people? Blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, if you're talking about Picasso, the motherfucker's dead. He's not going to care. Right. So, I don't know. You do whatever. Yeah. Even as a living person, if they've really been found out doing shitty things, like really awful things, I can understand that. But I mean, what kind of sucks is like, I've been on both ends where, I've been, uh, I've been a target of sexual harassment and all that other shit. So I get it. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I see how other people, when they come forward, yeah, some people, they ruin it for people for what it has right. happened. Yeah. Like, I for think sure. there was like some people, like some women in comics that came out, email leaked out and they said, oh yeah, I filed a sexual harassment suit just to fucking, a fake one to get ahead. And I'm like, right. what? Oh, yeah, dude. I know. It's like, thank you. It's like, yeah, it's like, 
it's like, like thanks a lot to all of us bitchy. yeah exactly yeah i mean it's just like you know i mean people wonder like why the fuck anybody would like go and do that i said i don't know the shit people do for attention yeah a lot more a lot more women do it and i know that's not going to be a popular ass thing but i ran into it too many times for me to mm-hmm. fucking go oh yeah you know no men do it too i'm sure men do it i mean right. we've seen that happen yeah but it's like a lot more proportionally is like women doing it which really sucks because mm-hmm. there's a lot of women that go through the real shit and, right. and it's weird because like i've been the target of like it's funny because men are the ones that victim shame me in terms of that shit it's usually the other women and yeah, women yeah. That are like, well, you know, I am uber this, this, and this, and I'm yeah. uber feminist, and every and blah blah blah, and then they're the first ones to tell you it's all your fault. Yeah, they're yeah, consistently. And so whenever I hear fucking chicks do that, do that, I'm like, mm-hmm. stay the fuck away from me, bitch. Yeah. It's one thing to say, you know, women should not be shamed. Women should not. I understand that, but when you go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, like some of the SJW types, yeah, you know, right, calling out like as I see it, you know, right. I'm not, I don't belong to one side or another. I yeah. just. I'm just like going, mm-hmm. you know, when I see those bitches say that shit and I don't have any love for them because right. it's like no. they were the ones that turned on me, not those particular ones, but those type have turned yeah. on me mm-hmm. when I have gone through my stuff. Yeah. When it's like, wait a minute, I fucking went through it and right. you guys are saying that you're supposed to be there for me and that women get fucked. Right. But then you're the ones that are turning around backstabbing me. Fuck you. Like, right. that's, yeah. that's how I yeah. feel about it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, unfortunately, we have to go into that. But it's like, I'm calling it out because it's fucking bullshit. It's like, don't fucking go on and on about, oh, how terrible it is. And then the moment a woman is victimized, you turn on her. Right. Because, right? Yeah. Like, oh, whatever the fuck you're saying. Yeah. Because I, I wonder I re- why they remain silent. Well, yeah, because I, I remember yeah. that there was, uh, I, I guess it's like there was a particular editor that was like very known for his, you know, sexual harassment and that literally it got to a point where they just said that you know no women were allowed to be alone in his office or something yeah that's and kind of instead of getting rid of him they had to come up with this stupid rule and there was this one woman who was talking about how she how he beat her and you know threw her on a desk and you know or whatever and like you know yeah. and and another woman came up in the chat going oh i know exactly what you mean he yelled at me once Oh my god! Yeah, like, oh, like, like that was comparable. Yeah, like that was comparable. You know, and it was just like, like, honey, are you actually trying to latch your bullshit onto this woman's real experience? Really? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of hate that, and I, yeah. I really hate that shit. And mm-hmm. to be quite fair, what kind of pisses me off about this whole thing is, is that I have been noticing, and again. It could be just my experience, but a lot of women fucking psych each other, send themselves out. Yeah. Because yeah. I had a mom that became the top 5% seller in real estate in Silicon Valley. She had to work hard at that shit. Like, yeah. as a realtor, you start from ground nothing, not, nothing fucking anything. You have to build yourself up. Okay? My mom, she had partnered with ma- other guys, but guys, like, would not go. But it's like when she would say, oh, this guy's a jerk, she wouldn't go, oh, because I'm a woman. She's like, oh, he's an asshole or something. Right. Like she didn't even go that strong. She's like, oh, he's a jerk. I didn't like working with him because uh-huh. A, B, and C. Right. But right. I think like sometimes when I hear the younger generation or some of our generation, they go like, well, I, I can't be in there. I can't succeed. It's a man's world and blah, right. blah, blah. It's like, you know, I, I've I've actually don't come in there with that attitude. I just said, you know what? I'm here to just do my thing. Right. Fuck off if you don't like it. Right. And the thing yeah. it took me years to do yeah. because, yeah, I kind of had to grow up apologizing for my own fucking self. I, yeah. I think a lot of women, that's the problem what we do is like women raise women sometimes to apologize for themselves way more than men make us do, right. in my experience. Yeah. Like my dad had no problem with having daughters and he's from right. Korea, right? My mom and dad are from Korea. He's totally fine with having daughters. There's like, I have a sister, right? And I'm not saying misogyny doesn't happen or any right. of that shit mm-hmm. doesn't happen, but it's not like the 60s or the 50s or any of that bullshit, mm-hmm. right? So for me, I'm kind of going like, you know, I'm me. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And I looked at it as an individual for myself rather than going like, well, I'm going to go and fucking think that every guy's out to get me. Most of my friends are guys. Yeah, Only right. recently have I started becoming really good friends with a lot of women yeah. because a lot of fucking women for a long time were real fucking fucked up to me. 
They and still are. They still are. I'm very picky with the the, the females. Yeah. I associate you know, yeah. With. And there's a lot of a lot of this that we still internalize that to this day we're still trying to like get over. <laughs> you I know, mean, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like, yes, it happens, but don't psych yourself out. Right. All the yeah. Time. Mm -hmm. that's not in a good position then yeah. you're gonna have this is kind of what i learned from my own personal experience all the fucking pre people predate on you if you do have that mentality yeah it sucks yeah because they're kind of like to... they they pick up on it and go oh it's like you know like like i don't know it's kind of like that whole once a victim always a victim because you're you're kind of like projecting that somehow and they're picking up on it right yeah I mean, it's, like, it's kind of weird well, it's kind of like that whole wild animal thing. Like, you know, they pick out the, the young and the weak. Yeah. And the yeah. They just can sense it. I don't know if they can smell the disease or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for me, I'm kind of like at this point now where it's like, you know, it's kind of funny. He's like, now I got elected president of CAPS, Comic Arts Professional Society. Which is oh. awesome. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're doing hybridized in Zoom in meeting calls. We're going to try to shoot that for that in April since we're opening back up here in California. And uh, it looks like it's going well. I don't know if it will be on schedule, but we'll see. Right. Fingers crossed. I got a good crew. I've got a good board that got elected along with me. They're all willing to help. Cool. I mean, I we started a social media section because, you know, this group has been around since 1977. It was found by Sergio Aragones and a few oh. really key uh -huh. cartoonists. Let me actually throw that up there, too. I should actually do that. But yeah, it's kind of funny because I'm on kind of a wiki page now and I never oh, thought okay. that. And here it is. It's like, it's kind of funny. I'm like the ultimate rebel because um, I'm in underground comics and shit. And here I am. I got fucking right. elected to this position. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like you're, you're now like officially part of the, I guess, well, you're kind of running it. So it's like the topsoil now. You're not underground. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like weird because it's like, as I said, like most of these guys, like the rest of the board are dudes, like they're guys, but it's like, I'm not, I don't think about that as like a bad thing. Like, honestly, like a lot more times when I've worked with people, I liked men better working with men better. Cause sometimes like, it's especially in corporate, the women fucking they're assholes to each other. They're, they're too busy leaning in. <laughs> yeah, too busy and unfortunately they lean in all over you. Yeah, it, it's just like, goddamn, bitch, you know, like, whatever. But it's like, but I mean, I'm not saying there aren't cool women where I've right. worked. There are. It's just, unfortunately, you just kind of know the ones to kind of stay the fuck away from for the most part, because they're just the loud, annoying, obnoxious they're ones. They're the know. loudest. Right? Now, like now, I mean, so, I've told Nita some stories right yeah. there. Like, and, yeah. and some of these stories actually, they, they actually link into these cartoons that you do for uh, demon mitch now now these were on on webtoons originally right yeah they're still on webtoon i actually do do uh i still do webtoon like i release it every wednesday uh for me right now uh yeah so i'm it's like this i have a patreon but i've kind of been bad on it because oh. i've been running this fucker right here <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thing. but uh yeah it's uh it's pretty good um so right now we're at 2064 so for me, we're almost at 30%. And I just opened this up last Tuesday. Oh, cool. My, my personal thing, guys, if this can happen today, and it will be a miracle from God himself, but if I can fund this fucker before WonderCon, that's just my own personal Oh, thing. right. Yeah, just as though it's like the rest of it's gravy and I can make yeah. a lot more demon bitch stuff. Right. But I mean, you know, as I said, I'm just kind of like, as I said, it, it, it does leak in. Like if you guys go into the project story, Oh, yeah. Actually, why don't we uh, play yeah. the video? Let's, let's oh, play, okay. the video. Yeah, yeah. play the video. Uh -huh. Hello, all. It's me again. Christy Shin, owner of Horror Tourist Studios, located in smoggy old Los Angeles, California. I'm the creator of Demon Bitch, a godforsaken demon from the 13th pit of hell, where people throw their dog shit and gum wrappers. She aspires to be hell's general, but is an incredible idiot as Armageddon hasn't happened yet. Or has it? Well, that's a debate for another time. Demon Bitch is so easily distracted by hard drugs, promiscuous sex, and other dumb attention-seeking shit that she hasn't made anything of herself yet. You might recall my other successful Kickstarter campaigns, Demon Bitch, I Told You So, and Demon Bitch Off the Wagon Panhandling Tour. And if you help contribute to making those campaigns, thank you, because there's more. In this installment, I am introducing a new graphic novel of hers called Trigger. What can I say? That pretty much describes the state of the world in the past two years. Anyway, it's a compilation of when Demon Bitch was stuck inside my very house and I had to do everything in my power to keep from going nuts. 
Also, we've got a computer game in the mix entitled Demon Bitch Disgusting Dumpster Fire. It's a game centered around Demon Bitch getting, well, attention. She always needs more. It's your job to get her some and fulfill that black hole she has inside of herself unless she learns to love herself. Fuck that. You'll have to maintain it by getting her likes on social media by acting pathetic through dishonest means and stupid antics, of which I'm sure is pretty amusing to everyone. Anyway, the first level of this game will be available to beta test by July 2022. We're working feverishly on it on our own self-induced slave labor camps, and we're probably going to break down and cry soon. And of course, we are introducing more swag and viable shit to make the deal sweeter. First of all, we have art from the pair at Hyde Hermit Studios. They provided the best ever fucking artwork for this stuff to buy. We have the Tamabichi pins and original art by Ninja Kai via AKA Connie Huang. Just looking at her stupid fucking face will make you want one. We have Demon Tiki shit in both a patch and sticker by Dallas Hoisington. He really loves this shit. Please get it because it will make him so happy. And I like making people happy. Last but not least, we also have artwork in the form of a charm and pin from Mary Zorlita Bellamy. Remember Animu Demon? That will now be a charm to grace your purse, your backpack, and your or your legal sack of goods. I'm not getting into that because I ain't no snitch. Also, we will showcase a signed three-print pack of which you can buy each one separately of Demon Bitch being, well, Demon Bitch. We also have stretch goals. Past a certain point, we will make triggered into a hardcover option as well as pasties and maybe some magnets or whatever I can pull out of my ass at the last minute if this thing explodes. Either way, it will be fun. Imagine having Demon Bitch magnet on your fridge. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> Either way, I've been good at getting the shit to you, folk. Back me again for another hell-laden and dysfunctional ride to the literary side, and may your temperature rise with the tide. Wow. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Man. Well, so here we are at the top of the hour. Uh, it's like, you know what? It, it's like we definitely could have gone on for, like, hours on this um and, and so we definitely have to bring you back wow. a, another time oh, you know, to, to, to continue uh, sure. this conversation um but really, so so here we go so demon bitch on kickstarter um back this shit. yeah exactly back it uh let, let's get her funded but before wondercon when is wondercon anyway <laughs> it'll actually be happening um april 1st to the 3rd i have to ah. head down on thursday to set up uh -huh. i just like heading down thursday because like it's from Friday to Sunday, and fucking, I just don't like dealing with crowds, and I like to settle yeah. in myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I know people go like, oh, you're intense. I said, yes, but I don't need to be intense 24 fucking seven. That's true. Time. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, being like, intense you know, and being stressed are two different things. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want to be like this asshole that goes like, fuck. Like, right. And it, it's funny because it's like, one time I was actually at a store for one of my first signings with Demon Bitch. And like I had brought chocolates for everybody because you know I like to thank right, people, yeah. like do little things. Like that's how I was raised. And one of the guys said, "Wow, you're really nice." Aww. And, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't an asshole to anybody at all. Like if you guys meet me in person, like Nina and I, we've talked. And you know, like you're yeah. really, you're pretty cool. You probably like when you in interact with me. <laughs> it, it's just like I was just like okay. Right. <laughs> so, it's also when they say you're really intense as a person. I'm like. I am like, I, I guess I did because it's like one interview I create. I went on this whole rant about how stupid it was for people to cancel crumb at this moment. Oh yeah, no, exactly. Moment. Yeah. And it, it was, was like, so funny. yeah, it was so funny because people were like going, I, you know, it's like, everybody's kind of afraid to say it. And it's just, right. I guess it's like, I got cheated to death. I love her COVID. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> yeah I, I guess it's, it's kind of like you know it, it's a combination of seeing the type of work that you do and then it's like and then it's like maybe like the sometimes like formal interviews can be too formal and then it's like you know it's like we're kind of assuming things about artists that we, we shouldn't. I mean, it's like I said, it's like we're all mortal here. We're all human. It's like we're just people, you know. It's kind of like it, it always reminds me of uh, watching Tim Visual walk around a convention. There was a convention we were at and he was walking around with his badge backwards <laughs> because he didn't want people to know who he was because I guess people look at his artwork and assume way too much about him. And he really is like a nice guy. <laughs> I mean, like, I had people tell me, like, wow, you're actually pretty normal for the stuff you draw because the right, people yeah. that I know that draw that stuff are fucked up in the head. And I'm like, 
okay. But I mean, like the thing is, what's weird is I, I've met people that draw like really fucked up shit, right? And they're actually pretty normal. But the people that draw the pretty cute shit, yeah, a lot more of them are fucked up and they have problems. Yeah, like, those I are have anxiety about fucking everything, and this makes my whole world better. And it's right, like, and these those are usually the same people who insist that everybody has to be like them and have to be. Oh, it's like a, a, if you do like even a smidge of porn, you know, it's like you're like, oh, you're a bad person and this, that, and the you're other a dirty thing. Whore. Yeah, exactly. Dirty, dirty or it's like, oh, if you read Lolita, you're a deviant or something. I mean, they, they really go overboard. With oh, it, it, so, I yeah. actually read all like the fucked up novels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like I have Jorge Bataille. That's the story of the eye. Your oh, life. my God. That book. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> that book. right there. I have that fucking book. And I read it. I was like, oh, <laughs> God damn. So I read all the Jorge Bataille. It's like, right, yeah. Man, that, that is a part of French bleakness that I never fucking thought I'd yeah. ever do. For real, it was just like, yeah. So it's like, yeah, but that's that's. I guess it's like that's how we enjoy ourselves. Like, I mean, the thing is, is that okay? Oh, somebody back. Let me see. Oh, ooh, ooh. oh, oh, thank by you. The way, back. Oh, you get like a custom fucking um, rude fucking shit from me. Like, oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> I just want to tell you guys. On top of all the other shit you get, I actually like writing personalized thanking notes. She oh. does, and they're offensive as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, you know, I just say that, like, I'll say, like, oh, yeah, you got the digital reward, reward that's good, but you have to understand, she tag-teamed Avast and Norton, and she still got brought home viruses, you know? Oh, like, she got fucked like a pair of Chinese finger cuffs. Oh, can I say that? Oh, wait, never mind, I'm Asian. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, yeah, 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 it's funny, because, like, one of the board members, he's a punk rocker, and I didn't know that, um, and he actually said, I had no idea that you were so knowledgeable about the underground comic scene and punk and i'm like i never made a Ooh. secret about it but i guess i just didn't mention a lot right yeah so it was like funny that was okay. me i back you thank you imperial uh, oh thank you thank you thank you very much uh for for backing but uh, yeah we definitely have to bring you back um yeah, well you still have 38 well, more days to go so we'll, we'll see how uh, that goes or you'll you always have a campaign so you're always uh, welcome on the show uh, next time we're gonna have to give you more time though because yeah, like I said, we, can, with us. we can keep, with we us can keep going <laughs> uh, shit. You know, this yeah. is day drinking and all that you know full day so yeah, yeah. how I've advertised you guys <laughs> yeah no it was uh, it was beautiful it was brought a tear to my eye <laughs> so tell the people where they can find you uh, outside of this Kickstarter. Oh goddamn! Um, I'm going to be at WonderCon. I'm going to be at E54, E for Ernie, and uh, I will be in Artist Alley. Okay, but you can find me on my link tree. Actually, let me give that to you. I fucking oh yeah. So say so everything uh, uh, Nita will put in the show notes. Yeah, it'll be in the show notes yeah. yeah. before it's published. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm planning to probably run another Kickstarter later on in the year, but actually for something serious, like for Sepulcher, my comic book, if oh. I finish it. And I'm actually doing a, some tarot cards too, called the Murder Ballad Tarot Cards, because I Ooh. actually like that album from Nick Cave. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was loosely based on it. I'm not saying that it is, right. but you know, it's just, you know, just, I, it has a certain palette and everything. Right. But going back, uh, yeah, I'm just like really excited about it, um, especially this Kickstarter. I mean, this has gone actually better than any Kickstarter that I have. Okay. And I've always successfully funded. If you guys look at my back record okay. and I've also been really good at fulfilling shit. Um, but yeah, so it's just that I'm really pleased at how it's going. Like I'm at fucking, I think it's 30% now. Let me see. Mm -hmm. but well, you yeah, still have, I, yeah, you still have plenty, plenty of time to, oh, yeah. uh, to fund. No, so. it has to be funded now. Oh, it has to be funded. Well, you know what? You're right too. Cause then that way you don't do have to worry now. about do it. it. Yeah, right do it now. That's kind of funded right now. You Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like I was raised Korean, so we're fucking just notoriously impatient about fucking everything. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm sure Nita understood that about Meredith. You're like, oh yeah, Meredith is like half Korean, right? She's half Korean. Yeah, she half Korean. Korean. And so she only had half the impatience. But she'd sit there <laughs> and tell you, she'd tell you, I am a super patient woman. One of the first things she ever told me is, I want to get you on an episode of a show that I'm not even going to give a clout to right now. And she's like, but this is this is in the future. The future was like the next day. Oh. The guy. <laughs> well, technically she, she was correct. It was the future, but she said, this, this, that's not now, that's right. in the future. And then the next fucking day, I get a StreamYard link. And I'm like, I had just dyed my eyebrows fucking hot pink and I had streaks across my forehead oh no and i'm like what the fuck i was like i got a stream yard link and then someone's like, what is this and she's like you're supposed to be live in an hour and i'm like 
Oh, oh. Technically, it was the future. I mean, come on, she wasn't yeah. wrong. That's so. true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but, I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there you go. So all the links will be in the show notes. Uh, again, let's get her, let's see if we can get her funded before WonderCon so she doesn't have to, one less thing for her to worry about. Yes, no more So, uh, yeah, so if uh, you're also interested in uh, any of my work uh, after the show, you can head on over to my portfolio site at egoworks.com, E-G-O-W-R-K-S, where you can find links to all of my galleries and social media sites, but I mostly post to Facebook. And uh, catch me on YouTube at my channel at Daphne Lage, L-A-G-E Art, for my Wednesday live streams as well. Nita, where can the people find you? I'm around. (laughs) Every Monday, maybe every Monday and Friday, maybe? (laughs) Mondays and Fridays, you can find me right here, Raging with Daphne. Uh, Let's see, you can find me as at C underscore chaos 24 seven on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook, but I'm mostly using that as a directory these days. I am on the cesspool that is Twitter. Right. So, so there we have it. We hope that you enjoyed uh, today's uh, episode. Um, And as usual, you know, uh, eat your food, stay hydrated, moisturize, mind your business. Um, Yeah, don't be greasy. Yeah, don't be greasy. Yeah, exactly. You have to wait for that to to soak in uh, because then you can't touch your screen, (laughs) your phone (laughs) screen. Um, And uh, and also remember, do the work, because when you do the work, uh, you you never, ever have to fake your accomplishments. And one last thing, too, if you spend money, (laughs) if you spend Uh money to uh, to to take up graphic design and your Photoshop skills are so crappy that you can't even get it past an FBI, uh, you know, an FBI trained uh, professional, uh, you may want to get your money back. So, <laughs> so bitch. What so, up? What so, that uh, on that note, we'll see you on Friday. <laughs> and hit the button. Hit the button.